I'm your queen, Nick Malita, and this is my channel, The Midnight Librarian. Today I will be talking about my March 2021 TBR. Excuse the mess, the utter chaos. I am reorganizing. I am not done reorganizing, but no, I needed to get this done. We are in a slightly different location. It's the same place. It's just a different angle. Everything's a mess because everything's piled up so I could get the area that you are currently sitting on clean as I got a new desk and I'm so happy about it. So I'm hoping that I can have a vlog up about reorganizing, but otherwise it's not quite done yet. I have the desk set up, but there's still drawers and cabinets to build as well as a hutch. So it's not quite done yet, but I do finally have like something to just be at. So I needed that about five hours getting this together last night so I could have something to work at uh, today because about half the day yesterday I didn't have anything to work on and sitting at the couch with a laptop trying to do work is not the best. <laughs> I never, never really considered ergonomics until everything started hurting. Bear with me, I know that it can be distracting. So yeah, let's just get into the books. So for March, I'm not doing a readathon at all. I'm sure there are plenty. Great. I just, after February and ballot time run by Kate from Chapters Kate, I just wanted to be a little more loose this time. Not to say that ballot times wasn't, it was just a little ambitious for me, even though I think I did okay, even though it's still February. So hopefully I didn't just jinx myself. I'm always worried about doing that. I just wanted, it was a little ambitious for this, as short of a month as it was and so I'm only giving myself so many books this month I'm just doing the buzz word and the arcs that I need to read so and that's it so I do have two arcs from NetGalley and I apologize if I keep looking over here that's where my laptop is and my information the first book that I plan on reading through NetGalley is Girl 11 by Amy Suter Clark this is a mystery thriller set to come out April 20th of 2021 and it's going to be published by Houghton Mifflin Horcut, Horcourt, Harcourt, but pretty much we were following El Castillo who was a social worker and specialized in kids who were victims of violent crimes. She is now a true crime podcaster and really it's actually pretty popular. Tackles cold cases of missing children in her hometown of the Twin City and after two successful seasons Elle is ready to tackle her white whale which is the countdown killer a serial killer who had an mo of ritualistically murdering three girls over seven days each a year younger than the last no one knows and then he suddenly stopped this was like 20 years ago no one knows why he stopped at the 11th victim who was 11 years old no one knows like why he did anything but then when someone calls her podcast with a tip, Elle goes to interview um, the person who with the tip only to find his murdered body and a child goes missing. So I'm pretty excited about this. This sounds like, as, as weird as that sounds, it sounds like a darker Night Swim, which is what I kind of wanted the Night Swim to be. So I'm, I'm hoping not to put too much hype into that though or that comparison just because I feel like that is like the downfall of books. The next arc I was approved for on NetGalley was When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. This one comes out April 13th of 2021 so yes I'm reading these a little early but I like to read them a month ahead of time and this one is going to be published by Random House Publishing Group Ballantine and this is another adult mystery thriller and this one follows Anna Hart, who is a missing persons detective in San Francisco. She know, understands the darker side of human nature and just kind of has to get away. So she goes back to her hometown of, in Mendocino County, 
only to find that a teenage girl has gone missing and it's reflective of an important, it's reminiscent of a crucial time in Anna's life and it's similar to a case that happened when she was still living in Mendocino. So this one piqued my interest because it's in Mendocino. This is, this Mendocino County is several hours away and is actually the immediate county south of where I am currently. So that is what ultimately piqued my interest, but also mystery, thriller, true crime. So for the Buzzwordathon options, so if you don't know, Buzzwordathon was a readathon created by Kayla from Books and Lala. Last year she made an announcement saying that she was putting Buzzwordathon as a Goodreads group on Goodreads and essentially what it is is that she took a word, phrase, or theme and you would read a book with that theme, word, or phrase in the title. January it was dream so we had to read books with the word dream in the title. I read Strange the Dreamer. In February the theme was color so we read books with color in the title with a, a type of color in the title. I went a more a very Kayla route in that I picked books based off the Pantone colors of the year so rather than the title I themed it around the cover so a yellow and a gray like there's a discord group and the group book for February was The House of the Cerulean Sea and I believe there's also Red, White, and Royal Blue that people are reading. So yeah, it's a fun little group and there's a discord and we chat and it's fun. Some people read one book at the beginning of the month and call it good. Others, like myself, pick and choose books throughout the month that fit the theme and just kind of have it as a month-long challenge, um, ultimately a year-long challenge, and we can choose to skip it a month or whatever. It's really loose, it's really fun, I enjoy it, and it's a good way for me to try to encourage myself to read some of my backlist titles, which so far I've been doing really well on, so, and I've been happy with my choices. For March, the word that we're looking for in the title is time. I don't have any books with time in the title, if you can believe it. So I'm going to think of this more as a theme as opposed to like a specific word and go with the theme of time. So like a time of day or a specific time or whatever. So and also I have five choices here and basically I'm not requiring myself to read all five of these. If I read one or two, I'd be really happy. If I read more than that, great. But otherwise, once I read one or two, I can read whatever I want. It's just basically a mood read after that which is something that I personally as a mood reader really enjoy so I like to be able to mix it up like that every couple months and so far it's working out great. So for my first choice it's <laughs> this, there is going to be a theme of a word in the title and that's going to be Midnight. So the first one is Five Midnights by Anne Davila Cardinal. This follows two, I believe, young adults, Lupe and Javier. Lupe is traveling for the first time without her father to Puerto Rico her, to visit her uncle. Her uncle is a detective trying to solve a murder. And Lupe kind of tag tags along to figure out if she can help him solve it. And then Javier, his friends are the ones being murdered. And he's trying to figure out why, so they end up joining forces essentially and trying to figure out why who keeps why these grizzly murders keep happening and I think there's some kind of paranormal element to them as that the synopsis mentioned something about blurring the lines between reality and myths and legends so we'll see I bought this several years ago and hadn't heard anything about it and was excited to get to it and just never have but recently I think it's cropped up on booktube and from what I hear this has kind of a bad representation of Puerto Rico so they'll bear that in mind when picking this book up. My next option is Wink Poppy Midnight. I have no clue what this is about. If you've been on my channel for a while you know that my constant thing is that I will look up a synopsis before purchasing a book just to make sure I'm interested particularly if it has a really nice cover. I particularly really love this cover just because I don't just I don't want to just buy books for the cover even though that's it, an important aspect I do try to read the synopsis to ensure that I will be interested in reading the book that being said once I buy the book I don't always remember the synopsis so and I don't tend to refresh myself on them because I kind of like going in not knowing much of anything because a lot of synopsis I feel can give the book away 
So I don't know what this is about. It is a lovely cover. I understand that Wink, Poppy, Midnight are names to three girls, I believe, or three characters. <laughs> That's all I know. I feel like there might be like woodsy magic stuff in here, but that's just a feeling. I, I have no clue. I remember this also being, I remember this being talked about a couple of years ago maybe on booktube and I have a feeling it was fairly disappointing for a lot of people that I remember, but who knows. This one is actually, it's on my back list, but I actually purchased it recently or within 2020. So I guess it's considered a backlist, <laughs> but that is The Midnight Live by Marie Rutoski. I, I think this has something to do with magic being forbidden to certain people. And we're following, I believe, a female main character who is restricted from certain pleasures in life, like particular foods or wearing particular colors, wants to engage herself with that, but can't because of her status in society until she meets uh, this guy who encourages her to find her own magic, as he does magic himself. So that's all I know about it. I probably butchered the hell out of that synopsis, but <laughs> that's all I know. The next one is actually a book of the month option that I've been wanting to read for a while and that is The Night Tiger by Yang Shi Chu. This would be the second book that I would read from her. I read The Ghost Bride and actually really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed that uh, as an audiobook. I'm just gonna read the like the blurb at the top and it's an utterly transporting novel set in 1930s colonial Malaysia, a world of servants and masters, age-old superstition, and modern idealism, sibling rivalry, and forbidden love. So that's all I know about it, that's all I want to know. And then my final choice would be 10 minutes and 38 seconds in this strange world by Elif Shafak. This is a translated work, I believe. I've been, I've had this on my TBR before and just wasn't able to get to it. But from what I understand, I forget which language this is translated from, but we are following Layla. A minute after her death brings a sensatious memory, a taste of a spiced goat stew, the goat sacrificed by her father to celebrate the long-awaited birth of a son, the sight of bubbling vats of lemon and sugar, which the women use to wax their legs while the men and attend mosque. So it's basically a book that kind of goes like, what if after the moment of death, the human mind continues to work for a few more precious minutes. 10 minutes, 38 seconds, exactly. So I think this will be really, like I said, I've been wanting to read it and just I'm hoping to fit it. So yeah, these are the five books that I hope to read a couple of from March, as well as the two mystery thriller arcs that I got from that galley. If you've read any of these, let me know what your thoughts are, were on them. Please, no spoilers in the comments down below. Otherwise, what do you plan on reading for March? Check out my raise awareness links down below. Particularly, Texas has been suffering in the last couple days. We have experienced a winter storm like they haven't seen before. Their infrastructure is not set up for negative 18 degrees. Fahrenheit so people are quite literally freezing and are without power for a couple days and it's said that it'll take up to one to three days to fix this and from what I understand a couple of mayors have representatives and mayors have not had the best responses to their citizens so that down below for if you can share and donate where you can. you can. Please do your research. Please like and share or donate where you can. And I hope that you are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading. I will talk to you again soon. Cheers.